So one of the biggest things I want to thank you for is your teachings about living unconditionally. Um, that's you somebody... better. So many conditions around, you can get yeah. pretty tripped up. Yeah, and I wasn't. Um, so it's had a really big impact on um, being happy and just living the way that I want to live. Um, the, where it gets a little tricky is when it comes to those big desires, those things that I really want. Well, how do you think those desires became big? Wanting them for a long time. Yeah. Having enough experience that you continued to say, I know what I don't want, I know what I do want, I know what I don't want, I know what I do want. And law of attraction just caused the momentum to grow. So are you suggesting that there is a gap between the momentum of the desires and the momentum of your belief? Yeah, for the big ones. Does it seem like you want to slow the desires down to match the belief or do you want to move the belief along to match the desire? Yes. How do you think one would go about changing a belief? By practicing. A thought that you keep thinking is in your way. In other words, it's slowing you down and not letting you move in the direction. Say that a different way. If you chronically think a thought that your inner being doesn't think, what is the net effect of that on you? Negative emotion. Yeah. So if you are aware that you're just sort of bummed out a lot or that you're disappointed a lot or that you're discouraged a lot, then you know you're doing that, yes? So when you catch yourself in the moment of negative emotion, is it possible to change that thought? No. So why do you beat up on yourself? <laughs> The momentum of it will take you. So what seems logical then? If in the middle of a negative thought, you're not going to change it, then what seems like a logical thing that you could do that would get more thoughts, which are just beliefs, which are just thoughts that you keep thinking. What seems logical that you could do to get more thoughts that you keep thinking, move in the direction of your desire? Think about something else. Think about something else that doesn't challenge it or think about it in a way, sneak up on it in a way that feels good when you sneak up on it. And by that we mean go general. Okay. So just things are always working out and of course I want this and so of course it's coming. Oh, it's time for a bigger conversation about this because we've been having this same conversation for a long time and you always agree, but you hardly ever get it. <laughs> it's time for another approach to okay. all of this. So okay. let's find it here right now. Let's start with the basics. It's easy to see that picture of, I have two thoughts going on, a desire, which is one thought and a belief that contradicts it. But what is the common denominator in the thoughts that I'm calling desires and the thoughts that I'm calling beliefs? What's something that you could say about both of them? Thoughts about things that I desire and thoughts about things that I believe. In both cases, I'm standing in my now, thinking them. All my power is right here in my now. How did I get to these thoughts that I'm thinking about now? Well, I've been thinking about them, but if I go back into my past, like to my birth mother or to whatever it is, and I try to change those thoughts, do I really change them or do I just nail my feet to the floor in a stronger way by thinking them again and thinking them again and thinking them again? You see what we're getting at? Mm -hmm. So that's not a very productive way to change a thought, is it? By figuring out when I started thinking it and by reminding myself how dumb I was when I first started thinking it and trying to talk myself out of thinking it because in any case I'm looking right at it. So it's active again. So I'm thinking it, I'm not slowing the momentum of that belief that's in my way. In fact, I'm encouraging the momentum of that belief that's in my way. So it's pretty obvious that that's not a really good approach, isn't it? So what could be a better approach? Now let's start with something that we were just talking about just a moment ago. When I feel in my physical form, when I feel negative emotion, what did you say that means? That you're thinking in contradiction to what you want. You're brilliant. Belief. Exactly. So when I feel negative emotion, it's not just a hindering belief. It's a belief that my inner being isn't thinking. My inner being is thinking about my desire and I'm thinking in contradiction to my desire. So. Doesn't that make me want to say, Hey, inner being, what do you know about this? Doesn't it make you want to try to approach it from the standpoint of your inner being? 
Doesn't it make you want to think about what your inner being knows that you might not know? So let's break that down. Maybe it will help. What do you think that your inner being knows? Just guess, just grab at it. What do you think your inner being knows that you in your human physical form might not know? The entire contents of your vortex, your inner being knows the positive momentum direction of everything that's in there. Your inner being knows who each and every cooperative component is and what that means to the whole. Your inner being knows that you are worthy, that there's nothing logical that is holding you back. Your inner being knows that it's only your thoughts that are holding you back. But you know what? Your inner being never thinks about those thoughts that are holding you back. And that's why you feel negative emotion. Because if your inner being thought about those thoughts that are holding you back, you'd feel great. But your inner being doesn't think about the thoughts that are holding you back. Your inner being refuses to think about the thoughts that are holding you back. So think about what that means. Think about what sort of personal lifestyle habits your inner being might have, the non-physical you might have that you don't have. Your inner being never looks back, for one thing. Always looking forward. Your inner being never tries to justify anything. Always eagerly looking forward. Your inner being knows that evolution is natural to you. Your inner being loves you for all that you are. Your inner being spends no time thinking about who you were. Your inner being only thinks about who you are and more. Doesn't this give you some sort of lifestyle habit choices that you might want to make? Let's discuss this relative to another person. So let's say that uh, there's someone in your life up close to you uh, who's been giving you a lot of grief. It doesn't matter who it is. Let's just be general about it. And you don't like that feeling of discord. And so your logic tells you from the discussion that we've just had that you're approaching this whole situation differently than your inner being is. So let's break down what the primary differences are. And this is what we want you to hear. We have not said this to you before in this clear way. You are likely looking at the person that this person is right now allowing themselves to be. Your inner being is looking forward to who they really are. It's not just that we want you to hook up with your inner being. We want you to experience the benefit of what hooking up with your inner being means. Have you ever heard yourself say about someone, well, they're doing the best they can. So I'm going to love them anyway, because they're doing the best they can. That part of them isn't. That part of them isn't doing the best they can. The inner being part of them is the best they can be. That part of them isn't. So why would you look at the part of them that isn't doing the best they can when your inner being is not looking at the part of them that isn't doing the best they can? Your inner being is looking at the becoming of them, not the disconnected part of them. And the same is true whether you're looking at another person or whether you're looking at yourself. Is this too much? Are you following it? You can't be less than you are. Life caused you to be more. You got to be it if you want to feel good. Now we're not demanding that you be it. You get to feel bad if you want to. Your life can suck if you want it to. You can feel jealous and angry and vulnerable if you choose to. But now that you know what you know, it doesn't seem that wise to choose that, does it? When you don't have to. And you know what is so confounding about it? All this time, you and other humans have thought, well, if I just give that person a chance, that person will become the conditional situation that I need them to be. They've got to do all the work. They've got to do the work. They must change so that I can feel better. And we say, that's a risk we wouldn't take. We wouldn't put all of our hopes and dreams and living happily ever after and how we feel in this moment on somebody else doing it for me. We would look at who their life has caused them to be and we would give our undivided attention to who their life has caused them to be and we would revel about who their life has caused them to be with our inner being who's looking at that and their inner being who's looking for that and we'd live happily ever after as we are allowing ourselves personally to be who our life has caused us to be. Do you follow all of that? 
If you did, you're really, really getting it. You're really, really getting it. Nothing else works. Nothing else works. When we say you create your own reality, we mean just what we just said to you. And when we say you are not conditional lovers, we mean what we just said to you. You are pure positive energy who must move forward. And you know what that means? That means you must expect and allow everyone else to move forward too. And when you choose anyone, no matter how public or private they seem, and you use them as your object of attention or your excuse to pinch yourself off. Well, they're not losing by your negative approach to them, but you in this moment certainly aren't winning. Yes. That was a lot, wasn't it? So now let's chew on where you are. You sat down to talk about what? <laughs> Those desires that seem really big and you helped me in defining that that means they're maybe a little bit further along right. than my belief. What does it mean that I have a desire that I don't believe? What does that mean in the context of what we just talked about? It means there's a part of me that does believe it and a part of me that doesn't. And you got to decide who you're going to be in this moment. Are you going to be the one who believes or the one who doesn't believe? Isn't that the only question that's on the table? Are you going to be like your inner being? Or are you going to be unlike your inner being? We're asking you all, are you going to be like your inner being? What's the upside of that? What's the primary advantage of approaching your life from the standpoint that your inner being approaches your life? What's the upside of that? I'll feel good. Oh, I feel so good. <laughs> it feels so good. What's the downside? It sucks. It feels awful not to be who you are because the larger part of you will not stop being who you are. Here's a good picture for you. You with us? So your inner being knows what you've asked for and sees it all stretched out there. And your inner being is just moving steadily with every thought. We started to say thought word in action, but with your inner being, it's thought. It's thought, it's energy. Your inner being is moving forward with every thought toward the delicious becoming of that. Got the picture of that? Your inner being's moving forward. So now you keep wanting your inner being to say, come along. But your inner being doesn't look back. Your inner being just keeps going. It's your job to go too. But you keep thinking, well, you could look back. You could give me a hand if you really cared about me. You could give me a hand and your inner being says, go on that way, not that way. Go on that way, not that way. Your inner being says, come along, come along, come along, come along. But your inner being is not going back to get you. Your inner being is, and here are the operative words, your inner being is paving your trail. Your inner being is building your bridges. Your inner being is clearing the underbrush. Your inner being has a momentum going. In other words, you said, I want this. You pointed that way. And your inner being says, we're on it. We've gathered everything that is necessary. We're going. And you're saying, wait for me. And your inner being says, we're going. And you say, but wait, but wait, I can't keep up. And your inner being says, we're going and we'll always be going. And eventually, if you want to feel good, you'll come along, you'll come along, you'll come along, you'll come along, you'll come along. We love you so much, but we want you to stop acting like humans. <laughs> humans are dependent on others. They want you to feel sorry for each other. And they want you come along, come along. I'll do this for you that I see you cannot do for yourself. Your inner being will never say that your inner being cannot do for you what you cannot do for yourself. You got to hook up. We liked that. Really good. Enough. Really good. So that's what we came for. That's the new piece that is going to forever change you. Esther used to have that experience with Jerry that get up from the dinner table on a cruise and their intention was to go back to their cabin and off Jerry would go and someone would stop Esther, but Jerry would just keep going <laughs> because he knew if he stopped, they would never get there. <laughs> And after a little while, Esther learned that he'd paved the way. She might as well just follow in the wake of that. You see what we're getting at?